Welcome to Holland Estates and Succession Planning, a series of podcasts hosted by Ian Hall and Susanna Popovic Montag. The podcast you are listening to will provide information and insights into estate planning in Canada. From the offices of Holland Hall in Toronto, here are Ian and Susanna. Hi, and welcome to Holland Estate and Succession Planning. You're listening, and some of you may be watching, episode 206 of our podcast. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Barry, and how are you? Great. Excited. Uh, this is our first podcast since the World Cup. Yes, that's right. So in, 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 in honor of the international component of the World Cup, we're going to talk about international issues. Well, and I thought we were just celebrating the winner of the Cup. Oh, right? that's true. We should be <laughs> celebrating Spain. That was a great win. I watched it from a bar in uh, Baysville, Ontario. <laughs> so it, was, uh, it wasn't exactly in Madrid at the time when it happened, but it uh, must be exciting to be there. Um, yeah, we're really uh, excited about today's podcast because, as I say, we wanted to try to bring in this international flavor that the world has been experiencing with the uh, World Cup and talk about what is it like if you are looking into Ontario. So if you're someone, and the joy of the internet is, is that someone non-Ontario people might be listening and watching our podcast. If you're involved with a lawsuit or litigation related to an estate and you don't live in Ontario, so you don't really know what to expect, what the system is about, and how it works. So we thought what we would do is look at some of the issues that would be uh, of, of consequence or of importance to someone who would be from, not, uh, from outside coming into our system in an estate litigation. And, and we wanted to start with this first this concept that uh, Chris Durden, uh, a great lawyer down in the Niagara region, taught me, but, and a neat idea was is that this idea that Remember, and he's, he does a variety of litigation, he said, remember Ian, when you get into a state litigation, the fundamental difference between a state litigation and all other litigation, wherever you are in the world, is that you have chosen to sue blood. <laughs> right? I mean, you can sue your wife, you can sue your, uh, your well, you, you can choose to have a marriage breakdown, it might be uh, contentious and so on, but in this case, they've chosen to sue blood. So that's the environment that we've all uh, live and breathe in every day. Uh, but let's add another layer to that, and let's have someone looking in to uh, our world of litigation. Or what are some of the issues that I would want to know about that exist in the, in the estate litigation field? So um, obviously, what is mo- most important is obviously is, is the client understands uh, the threshold that, that you're going to meet, and that is, is this could be aggressive and emotional litigation. But one of the first questions I always ask my client who may be in Germany who's involved with an estate in Ontario is, you know, what are their personal circumstances? What are they, where are they at before they get involved in what can be uh, heavy duty litigation? And the truth is, you know, we have more and more of these kinds of clients these days, thank goodness, to technology being as it is. And uh, our own law society in, here in Canada, and particularly in Ontario, has imposed obligations on us as practitioners right from the get-go in terms of these retainers and we start with the requirement that we actually have to identify and verify the identity of our clients and so before we even get into exploring what it is that they want to do we were already working up some energies being expended on finding out exactly who they are and verifying who they say they are so that you know at the end of the day we've got the protection in knowing that we're acting for who they say they are and they have the protection of knowing that they've got reputable counsel that's representing them in their matter. Well, that's a really good point and an important starting point that a lot of clients who are from outside of Ontario don't understand that we have these strict rules. Right, right. All right, well then let's talk about some of the legal issues. And uh, one of the ones that uh, generates a tremendous amount of estate litigation, and the purpose of this mini-series is not to rehash too much of the detail of these legal issues, but just identify them. The purpose, one of the big issues, of course, is what about probate taxes? And, and how does that affect, we have a special tax in Ontario, first mm-hmm. what is it, and then how does that affect litigation? Well, certainly um, I think if we step back, it causes a lot of litigation. Mm-hmm. Um, we sort of see the end result of people who are being very creative in their estate planning, trying to avoid what, at the end of the day, really turns out to be a minimal tax when you compare it to the fees that are incurred in either trying to avoid it or then thereafter disputing it and trying to uh, deal with the litigation that comes about as a result of that. Okay, 
but so so it's bad the, 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 it, that part of it. But first of all, what is a probate tax? What are we talking about? If I'm in Germany and someone's saying, well, "What's a probate tax?" or I'm in Spain, hopefully, because right. they, <laughs> they're going to be uh, watching this, no doubt. Well, obviously, um, we've got an estate here in Ontario. The government will tax an estate trustee, the estate, when uh, someone dies, and you're applying for probate. So if you're applying to the court to get authority to administer an estate, as the named estate trustee, uh, whether in a will or on an intestacy, there's a requirement to pay a probate tax, an estate administration tax, we call it here. That's a graduated tax that uh, will is, is a check that basically the estate trustee has to submit with their application in order to get the court approval of their appointment. And it is truly a death tax. Yes. Uh, in the U.S., they have death tax. All over the world, they have different varieties of death taxes. But in Ontario, we have a, 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 you know, they can call it what they want. The government can call it what it wants. But it's a death tax. That's right. And, uh, and as you said earlier, it's a modest tax, and people tend to overreact to it, but it's still a tax. And if you plan well, you can avoid it but you can also create new problems. That's so right. let's talk a little bit. First of all, it's, it's a modest tax in the sense that it, it, it's a graduated tax, but roughly about 1.25% of the assets are taxed. And that's the key, the assets of the estate. And so you're looking at personal property that's owned here in Ontario by the deceased and real property. And the only liability, interestingly enough, that you can deduct from the value of the estate is any uh, mortgage on real property. And so that's something you keep in mind that uh, even though the estate may have a whole bunch of liabilities, you're still going to pay tax on basically the gross value, less any real um, mortgages on real property. Absolutely. And so once we realize it, it's a tax, so we're going to take our steps to try to avoid it, the litigation that can tend to ensue from it ties into this, uh, this, this planning that is done maybe a little too quickly and a little more haphazardly, and the classic is the, the joint account scenario. That's right. Well, any claims for constructive trust or resulting trust can also arise from these kinds of situations, and so it's clearly not a real challenge that's going to arise out of the estate administration tax, but different kinds of litigation that still can be quite contentious and in involve people from the outside. So uh, just to wrap up this point then on the, on the probate tax types of litigation, the joint account, what exactly, what are the mechanics? Why does that, how, how does that uh, give rise to uh, litigation? Well here in Ontario, if you have someone on title with you jointly, there's the concept of right of survivorship. And so even though two people can be on title jointly with right of survivorship, on the death of one of those uh, individuals, the other would take the whole property by right of survivorship. And so the question becomes, you know, was that in fact what was intended? Was it intended to give a gift of the, re the whole value of the, the particular asset on death? Or was it really just a sort of a trust arrangement where that individual was on for maybe convenience purposes and holding that property in trust at the end of the day for the estate? And of course, if it lands in the estate, it's taxable, and if it doesn't, it isn't. That's right. All right, so that's just one other perspective, and I think we're going to wind up on that point and come back in our next podcast with some other twists and turns of a litigant, a foreign litigant, mm -hmm. looking to Ontario, what can they expect? So Great. thanks so much, Susanna, and Thank again, you. congratulations to Spain. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian, and I look forward to our next podcast. You have been listening to Holland Estate and Succession Planning by Ian Hall and Susanna popovic Montag. The podcast you've been listening to has been provided as an information service. It is a summary of current issues in estates and estate planning. It is not legal advice, and you're reminded to always speak with a legal professional regarding your specific circumstance. To listen to another Hall & Hall podcast or leave any questions or comments, please visit our website at hallestatemediation.com.